grade three. Oh my gosh. Hi. I made a video that I sent to Randy, but it wasn't a great one. So I'm redoing it for you. Um, I am just going to show you things. So here is the unit one um, stuff where you can find it. So you're going to go to your shared drives, your bridges in math. You go to grade level planning and then third grade. Now in third grade, there's lots of different folders and you're gonna go to the most recent one, 2020, 2021. And in there, you're gonna find my mess right here, Marn's things, so you don't need to go in there. You can if you want. Um, and then here are the ideas that I have for you for number corner. And then here would be the ideas for unit one. So if we go into uh, number corner, if you are gonna do that at the beginning of your math time for a little bit, or if you're doing it a different part of the day, this is just giving you a play-by-play -play of like, what are the major hitters for a number corner in September? So I have it in bold and italics, calendar grid, multiplication models. So like showing those each day would be a good thing and having kids um, have that discussion with them about how it not only could be represented by a repeated addition, it could also be represented by something called multiplication. And we can write it this way. So just keeping in mind that these, this group of uh, third graders does not have much experience at all with multiplication, okay? Um, number line up to 1,000 would be a major hitter. And that's really the only other one. The other ones that I put here, Calendar collector, computational fluency, solving problems, I would say leave out. Number line up to 1,000 would be the one other thing to do. So um, it could be manageable. Um, this one, you could play. You have a, uh, a big poster. You should have one that's the counting from 10 to 1,000 by 10s. So you'd have that up and practice counting by 10s. Uh, and practicing counting by tens, you could do by playing the game last person standing, or you may know it as spud. So you have the kids counting by tens to a thousand. And as you're going around in the circle, whoever happens to be that multiple of 100 has to sit down. And they'll still be involved in the game because they're still listening and watching. But uh, you keep going and every multiple of 100 sits down. And then you have a last person standing that wins. And that one is a super fun game. You could also play it counting backwards by tens from a thousand. Um, then another activity to do for number line up to 1000, that would be a good one for these guys, is to make their own huge number line out of the tens like this, counting by tens. So if you are looking for that template, I have it right here for you so you don't have to go looking. There it is, you can click there, copy it off, and they would cut these out in strips glue them together, highlight those multiples of 100. And then once they do that, you could give them some number riddles, which are down here. So they could um, put like a game marker. You give each kid just a game marker and then you give them these riddles and they try and figure out what's that mystery number. Something else to do with number line is right here. Just look at that number line, name one of the numbers, like after you get through a number line riddle, like here the answer was 430, and you talk about how 430 is made up of four hundreds and three tens, or it could also be made by having 43 tens. If I have 43 tens sitting there, I could also have 430, or 430 ones, right? Okay, so those are your major hitters for September. Then, if I X out of there, the, if I go back to 2020, 2021, I'd hit unit one. And now in here, I have the Google slide deck for you and the notes of my thoughts of how you could run through unit one with grade three. And then this right here is the smart board file that has all of unit one in it, if you would like to use that at all. So let's see, grade three, unit one, if I go there, here are the notes on the four main focuses for unit one, condensed down for you. And 
the smart board file is also right here. You can get it there. And then the Google slide deck, you can also get right here. It's all in one document if you like it better that way. And focus number one is addition fact strategies. So for example, I have, what could you do with that? Well, you could use the number racks to practice these addition strategies that they saw in second grade, and they saw some of them in first grade, and they saw some of them in first or in kindergarten. So they've been working on addition fact fluency for three years. Um, so this is a quick thing to run through. Uh, and I made a video here that's also on the Google slide deck that you could use and play um, along with the kids if you want to and pause the video and work it out, practice some together, and then um, however you want to do it. Um, then here are some practice pages that pertain to those addition facts. So if you scroll through, you'll be like, oh my gosh, Myron, you sent us like 40 pages. I'm not saying to have the kids do all of them. Um, this is just, here are some fact practice pages. You decide what you want to use, okay? Um, and what kids could have practice on, all right? Uh, extensions, I'm working with Emily on putting those in here. And then games that deal with addition fact strategies. Here you have two Bridges games that you could either play with the class or they could play in partners. Um, make the sum. They also played this game in uh, second grade, but it looks a little different in third grade. Uh, so the one I have linked here is the, I'm seeing which version I have. This is the third grade version. So they have not played it this way where they lay out the cards in an array like this and play make the sum, but they know of make the sum. Okay. Um, and then target 20, this one I have on the Google slide deck on how you could do it just playing by yourself if you're interested in that. And then if you're interested in have something that's ongoing throughout the year, you could make use of extra math. And this is a website that's free, that's working on just fact fluency. So they're addition and subtraction facts. And they're working with this guy right here to master them. I will tell you it is a timed, it deals with t being timed. So if a kid's gonna get super anxious about that, I wouldn't use it with them. Um, Fact Monster is another place to go to just have uh, flashcards online where you can practice your facts. So if they need addition facts, then look at that. There's a lot of different levels. It goes to level seven. So they could get their own level for themselves to practice some facts. So each focus has stuff like this, same as focus number one. It has how you could do it in the classroom um, with a video, and then um, practice pages, extensions, games, and then um, other things, if there were other things. I will say that you might be scared to go into the double digit addition strategies, but they did work a lot on double digit addition at the end of the year um, in that later half of the year. I know we only had two and a half months, but they did do quite a bit of double digit addition um, with place value. So um, I would just delve into it and work on these strategies here, split them both or keep one and split one. And I have the video of it here, if you wanna use that. Again, practice pages. These practice pages are actually coming from the intervention materials. So it actually gives more of a visual for kids. It gives more of a scaffold. Um, so I thought I'd include that and find those for you to be able to use. And then uh, game-wise, they could be practicing their addition with Greg Tang and I'm not sure I put this on the Google slide deck. I'll have to check. If I didn't, I will. Um, so they'd hit up addition. They'd scroll through. I've showed you this before. Either they want easy or hard. If I click easy, there we have 27 plus 82. What's the two worth? I'd have to hit 20, then I'd hit seven, then I'd go 80 and two. And now I have to get my final answer, okay? So, um, the easy version looks like that. The hard version is actually only splitting one. Let's see. Yeah, 
It only splits the last one. So I can put that on the Google slide deck because that would actually be good. And then focus number four, just telling you about this one. These are story problems. And again, you're going to come back to it in another unit. But I am providing you with some graphic organizers this year. Might as well uh, if you want to use them. I do use them in the video. And there's three different types of addition and subtraction story problems. So there's three different types of graphic organizers. And here is the blank PDF if you want to have these in like little... Um, those pocket things so they can write on them with a whiteboard marker. Maybe you like that. Or you just print a lot of copies of them for kids to fill out <clears throat> if you want to use them. And then these practice pages are ones that actually make use of the graphic organizers. So they're actually from the intervention materials uh, that I picked out. And then games, going to Greg Tang. He has a place where it can make word problems for you on the spot. And I'll just show you this because... It's a word problem generator. I'm going to do addition and subtraction. I'm not going to change it to multiplication division. Add to whatever result one, and the range is one to 10, or I can step it up to one to 100 to make it double digit. And then I have some word problems for myself. And you, it gives you a hint with a picture so I can see kind of, okay, what am I supposed to do? Oh yeah, that's from that graphic organizer. I can just add those two together. So it's nice. And then other games that you know of, Rabbit, Tracks, and Carrot Grab, whether you want to go there or not this year. Um, one other thing to show you in my time is that Google Slide Deck. So if I go into it, <clears throat> I want to be able to tell you that when you do open it, you need to make your own copy. So go to File, Make a Copy, Entire Presentation, and call it what you will, and save it in a folder that's in your drive, not the shared drive, so that you can make your own changes to it, and it is yours, and kids are not going into my uh, shared, uh, whatever this is, Google Slide Deck, okay? Um, then, also, another thing, when you do share this with kids in Google Classroom, when you hit the Share button, you want to make sure that down here under get link, you want this to say anyone with the link. You don't want it to be restricted or Gunnison Watershed School District, just anyone. And they're going to view it. You're not going to have them edit it. So just view it. I'll copy that link. Then when I go to my Google Classroom and I put it in there, I'd hit up create assignment if that's how you want to do this and I don't know, put unit one, and I'd add a link. And when I add that link, I'm gonna erase edit, and I'm gonna write present. So now when a kid clicks on this, on his Chromebook, it should come up in present mode, which is much better than seeing it like this. They'll actually see it like that, okay? And then they just click through and do stuff on there. I did do a flip grid on here. Um, the flip grid would have to come from your account. But if you're like, oh my God, I don't even know how to do flip grid right now. Like, I don't want that on there. Then you can get rid of it. Um, or you can just have kids do the one on my account. I don't care. Um, uh, the one I had was skip count by tens or hundreds, forward or backward. And um, they can video themselves, recording themselves do the, doing that. So you could take my exact words and put it in your flip grid. And then you would need to escape here. You would need to take this, take out the link, and then put in your link for your flip grid if you want to do that. If you're like, I don't even want to deal with flip grid, just take off the link and say, we're not doing that right now. Okay? Then this home button is a good one to know of because that's where all the videos are, that's where all the practice sheets are, the math at home activities in case a parent wants to do something at home, and then just some more games, even more games. Okay, so this is really for when they're at home or for the parents to have somewhere to go to see what you're doing in the classroom for the next month or two. Okay, so play around, let me know if you have questions, I will be here to help you guys virtually, all right? 
Oh gosh, this is a long video. I am so sorry. We just had a lot to go through.